It's with great pleasure that I introduce Samaya Keynes. Uh, Samaya is a, an economics correspondent for The Economist. Uh, prior to journalism, she was policy, a policy advisor at the Treasury and a researcher at the Institute for Fiscal Studies. So she's got an incredibly interesting career to any young budding economist. So be sure to ask her lots of questions as you've already been doing. Uh, she's going to be speaking about the economics of free stuff, which is an exciting topic for any economist because there's no such thing as a free lunch. I'll pass it over. Thank you. Hello. Oh, hello. Is this on? Can you hear me? Yes? Great. Hi. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the economics of free stuff. Uh, now, you all look fairly young, so as far as you're concerned, free stuff is awesome. Just kind of un unambiguously great. And over the course of this talk, I'm going to essentially give you some examples where free stuff is not so great. It has these un unintended consequences that policymakers have to deal with. Um, so, to start off with, why are some things free? Some things are free because no one wants them. Um, so, Mr. Green Monster may be a bit smelly, no one wants to hug him, so he's giving out hugs for free. It's a bit tragic, um, zero demand for this thing. The other reason things are free is because there's zero marginal cost for, to produce them. Right, so things are very abundant, you can maybe copy and paste things freely on the internet. Um, zero marginal, near zero was zero marginal cost. Some things are free because Essentially, the government needs to provide them, and it's impossible to exclude people from consuming them. So, you know, you get defense services, in theory, for free. Um, because the government can't say, well, only you can get the effect of the nuclear deterrent, and you can't. Um, essentially, everyone ends up paying through that through taxes, but um, the kind of extra person will consume that for free. The final reason things might be free is because someone has decided that it would be fairer to give them out for free. So Harry Potter tickets, maybe you give some out um, because you want to make sure that everyone can access Harry Potter. Um, healthcare, maybe you really, really don't like the idea of some people essentially dying because they can't afford help. So those caveats in mind, obviously in normal life, we allocate a lot of things using the market. Um, we use prices to allocate lots of things and if we were to take away the price signal, then that would cause problems. Um, like violence, maybe, if there was a free t-shirt offer. So prices are signals. Prices are supposed to tell the producers, you need to enter the market because people are willing to pay for this stuff. Right, fidget spinners. You know, if fidget spinners were given out for free, where would the fidget spinner producers be? Uh, not, not producing fidget spinners. Um, prices are also supposed to allocate stuff to the people who value it the most. So you worry if you were giving out t-shirts for free that some chump who was standing next to the free t-shirts at the right moment got the free t-shirt and someone else who really, really wanted that free t-shirt uh, and who might be prepared to pay much more for it than, than the randomer who was standing next to the free t-shirt uh, stand. You might worry that the, that the person who really cared about the t-shirt wouldn't get it. And so, you know, for most things we use prices to allocate things to the people who supposedly value them the most. Now, I'm, before you all kind of wrinkle your noses, obviously that breaks down in a lot of situations. I'm not arguing at all that you should use prices in every single realm of the world. I think the, the point to kind of emphasize is that um, if you're not using prices, then sometimes you're using some other system to allocate resources. And that other system that you're using instead might not necessarily be much fairer than the price system, or it can at least have its own unintended consequences. Okay, look, and, and also, sorry, another problem with things being free, um, and, and a theme that will recur in this talk, is that um, there are often hidden effects or cross-subsidies. So often things aren't really free. So the question is, who's actually paying for them? If, the consumer, if you're not paying for this thing when you consume it, who's actually paying for it? In the case of defense, rich taxpayers are paying for it, or just any taxpayers are paying for it. Um, in other cases, there are, there are different, different payers for the product. Okie dokes, so next category. So, so what I'm gonna do is essentially just go through various examples of free things and talk about you know, the problem, um, unintended consequences, and so on. So free plastic bags. Supermarkets used to hand out plastic bags for free. 
Um, so our duck friend got to get a free plastic bag, but also maybe um, got tangled up in a plastic bag, which wasn't so fun for him. So these were, also, they, these were almost free to produce, super cheap to produce a plastic bag. Um, and maybe if you're a business, it makes sense to hand out plastic bags for free. Number one, it's pretty great to have you know, the Tesco brand being carried around the, the center of town, telling everyone, look, there's a Tesco's nearby. Uh, two, if you're a supermarket, you, you kind of want to, you want people to buy as much stuff as possible. And if they're limited by, you know, by not having a bag, <laughs> um, then they won't buy as much stuff. So you want to allow people to buy the super heavy tubs of caviar or whatever they're buying. Um, however, obviously, this has consequences. Um, so obviously the effect was to encourage huge, huge use of single-use plastic bags. Um, so according to one estimate, um, in 2014, there were 8.5 billion single-use plastic bags used in UK supermarkets. That is a very, very large number. Um, and you know, in my flat, I have a bag bag, um, which is a bag to hold all the plastic bags that I've got for free at some point or one another um, at, a, at a supermarket. You know, clearly, I wasn't thinking sensibly about whether I should just bring a bag when I went to the supermarket. Um, however, that, all that changed when um, in October of 2015, English shoppers started paying 5p per bag. Other countries had already done this. Um, and, and the reason that, that they, the government has decided to encourage uh, shops to charge for plastic bags is because there was this cross subsidization number one. So people who were bringing their bag um, conscientiously to the supermarket were in effect paying for the plastic bags of the people who weren't. Um, there were environmental effects, as I mentioned um, earlier, for our poor duck friend. Um, uh, interestingly, actually, um, plastic bags take less carbon emissions um, to produce than cotton bags. The problem is obviously that they don't biodegrade, right? So you're kind of waste cost is, is super high. Um, and so these things were almost free to produce for the, for the supermarkets, but they, they didn't take into account the social cost of producing them, the environmental damage, um, and so on. So uh, now, now English shoppers pay for plastic bags, so that's pretty great. Um, interestingly, two thirds of people quite liked the charge. They thought it was useful. It was a useful nudge, reminding people that you shouldn't take four plastic bags every time you went to the supermarket. Um, I actually remember, you know, if, if you have a heavy thing, sometimes they just whack on two, just why not? Um, so, which I'm pretty sure has reduced <laughs> since they started imposing the charge. And since it, was, since it was introduced, plastic bag usage in the affected shops has fallen by 80%, which is huge, right? Think of all those plastic bags that were being used before that just didn't need to be used. Now people just reuse old ones or they use cotton ones. Um, so, you know, in theory, great. Okay, next item, free parking. So I don't know how many of you drive, probably not that many. Um, most, the, 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 in essence, the free par car parking problem is quite similar to the plastic bag problem. Um, so shops want to give out lots of free car spaces to encourage people to drive to them so they get more customers. Um, but there's this external cost in the form of congestion. Um, it encourages too many people to drive. Um, there's this really nice quote um, which is, a developed country is not a place where the poor have cars, it's where the rich use public transport. Um, so you worry that if you're giving these car spaces, you are encouraging people to drive, and that is essentially starving money from the, the, the um, public transport infrastructure. Um, and as with plastic bags, there's cross subsidization going on. So if, the, if there's free parking, the shoppers at the shops um, who are not driving are in effect paying through higher prices um, for the car spots of the people who are driving. Okay, so that, that's a kind of fairly similar. The really, really emotive and tricky case is hospital car parking. Um, so Jeremy Corbyn announced that he would end charges in hospital car parks. Super popular policy, sounds great. Um, ultimately, uh, the worry with charges, obviously, is that demand for spots in hospitals is pretty inelastic, right? So you worry that this is essentially just the hospitals trying to extract rents from people who are driving um, who really need to go to the hospital because they're sick or they're trying to visit someone. Um, on the other hand, you uh, worry that if car parking is free, if, if, the, if the hospital says, fine, we're going to let everyone, everyone park here who, who wants to, 
some of the devices used to ration out the car parking spots. So, um, and you worry that essentially people end up using the car parking spots who don't really need them, right? The charge might discourage people who could just as easily use the bus to get to the hospital from actually using the bus. Um, and, the, and, and the reason why hospital car parks are so difficult is because you know, most people visiting a hospital kind of need the spot, right? It's really, really difficult to find a sensible way to ration out those spaces. So in England, there's a scheme, so in England you can charge, but there's a scheme whereby um, you can apply to be reimbursed if you're, uh, got, if you're on a lower income. So it's called the Hospital Travel Cost Scheme, and it was founded in 1988, which you wouldn't know about, perhaps, if you hear some of the policy rhetoric around this. The problem is obviously that visitors aren't eligible. So people, you know, if you're if you're sick and 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 you don't have very much money, you can you can park for free. But you know, maybe the the your grandchild who wants to come and visit you is put off by the by the cost, and and that slows down your recovery. There's kind of evidence that having people visit you is is helpful for your recovery process. Um, I'm not going to pretend that this is easy. Right? This isn't, you know, I think this is one of those areas where charging isn't, you know, charging comes with downsides, giving things out for free comes with downsides. I think it's just worth notice, kind of knowing that when you hear these big headline slogans, if you're going to give these things out for free, then you need some other way of deciding who gets a car spot if, you, if you're completely unable to build new car parking spaces. Right? There is going to, ultimately, there will be some rationing mechanism for giving out hospital car parking spots. Um, and, you know, so this kind of, it's, it's not easy. Um, and anyone who tries to say that it is, is, is not being, um, uh, you know, not honest, but just kind of uh, being responsible, <laughs> essentially, with the, with the facts. Okay, so the next, next example I'm going to talk about is free samples. So, a dodgy man comes up to you in the street, have some free samples of these white pills. Uh, say no, kids. <laughs> say no. Um, the point here is that um, there are reasons why private businesses hand out free samples. So, clearly in the guy trying to push you these pills, he's trying to get you hooked onto stuff so that later on down the line, when like, your life has been destroyed because you're completely addicted to these drugs, um, then he's going to make a killing out of you, right? Um, in both senses. But, but, you know, he really wants to essentially get money from you in the future by hooking you now. Um, bad plan. Just, Putting, putting that out there, there are obviously less kind of illegal examples of this going on. Um, so obviously, uh, you know, food companies hand out free samples of their food. It's not addiction, obviously. They just want you to try this new product. Um, razors, uh, they, you know, might give you the razor for free and then sell you the blaze for super, super expensive. Um, hey, have this free phone with this really expensive monthly plan. Um, you know, that, there's kind of different ways of pulling people in. Um, and, you know, the free thing is supposed to lock you in to future purposes, purchases. The worry is that this is a case of deceptive framing. Um, so the fact that they're giving you this thing for free means that you're not very well equipped to make the decision that you're actually making. So um, just as, as an example, in 2011, um, there were 13 million store card accounts in the UK. So what is that? So basically, at Topshop, you could get a credit card. Topshop would give you um, a store account you could borrow and you'd pay interest um, on that account. Um, and what shops would often do is they would say, hey, I have this free gift um, alongside this awesome, pretty high interest credit card. And the, and the worry was that people were essentially taking out the loans because they, were, they really wanted this free teddy bear, teddy bear. Or maybe a gift voucher, often it was gift vouchers. Um, and so the, 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 the concern was that essentially the free gift was triggering the kind of instant gratification bit of their brain. And so they would take on the loan, um, think, but essentially it would kind of screw up their decision-making process. They would make this quick decision, whereas actually they should be thinking about their long-term finances and making this kind of long-term decision. So in England, um, the government decided, we don't, we don't really like this, we're worried about this. And they didn't ban it, um, but what they did was they inserted a seven-day cooling-off period. So since March 2012, you still can offer free gifts, but you're not allowed to actually give them the free gift until seven days after they've taken out the card. Um, so, so what they're doing there is kind of trying to take away that instant gratification so that you're making the right decision, essentially. Now, I have 
pretty much run out of my allotted time to speak. So I'm going to very, very quickly go over my last uh, few examples. Um, and if you're super interested in these, then why don't you just ask me questions? Um, so the next one is free cash, free banking. So Britain is super, super unusual in that you don't pay. We have a free and credit model of banking. So if you have cash in your current account, you don't have to pay to withdraw cash, make um, payments or anything. That is really weird um, in the world. N pretty much no one else does that. There's one random country, in, which is like a developing country. Um, it's weird. It's got all sorts of problems. It basically encourages banks to raise the money from elsewhere, either not paying you any interest or just whacking you with overdraft fees. Um, the banks don't really like it, but imagine being the one bank that started charging for its current account. Everyone would leave. Uh, it would, you know, imagine being the government that was in power when all the banks suddenly started shifting to charging for the current accounts. You would not be popular. Um, and then this this one is the kind of is the most tricky one, right? So all you guys get Facebook accounts for free, maybe um, email accounts for free. Um, the worry here is obviously it's not really free. <laughs> and essentially you're paying by giving your data to them. Um, and again, there's this kind of misframing of the decision. You're give, you know, imagine, just this will terrify you. Imagine if every single email, every single Snapchat, every single WhatsApp that you'd ever sent became searchable by your friends. It would, really, it would be really bad. It would probably destroy our social fabric. Imagine everyone would just search for their own name and find all the horrible things that everyone else had ever said about them. <laughs> and society, it would be a complete nightmare. Yeah, awful. You're giving these companies huge, huge amounts of information without really thinking about it. And, and, and the, kind of, the way that that's being done is you, you're paying. I mean, they're not recording that kind of data. That's not the kind of data they're interested in. They're interested in your shopping habits. Um, but the point is that you don't really think about it when when you get these free accounts. You don't really think about the kind of information that you're giving out. And part of that is because you're not really paying for it. Um, and uh, this I mentioned at the beginning, but I kind of, you know, after complaining about free things, um, I just wanted to kind of point out that there are a ton of really, really good reasons that things should be free. Um, free healthcare, free doctor's appointments. Sometimes people suggest that you should charge for doctor's appointments. Evidence is that's really kind of not a good idea. Um, you essentially discourage poor people from going to the doctor. Um, you know, it's again, it's tricky, uh, but um, you know, don't I don't want you to think that I love markets um, in all areas, and of course, some things really shouldn't be free. Um, so, this last point I, point I want to make um, is that whether or not you pay for things can change the nature of that transaction, right? So, if I paid my mum for her to give me a hug, that wouldn't be as great as if she gave me a hug, and I knew that she was giving me that hug because she loved me. Um, and so there's this, and, and that's obviously a kind of very extreme example, but the, the, the point is that, uh, you know, prices are a way that we've used to organize certain bits of our life, and in some bits of our life, they're obviously not a very good idea. And there is this gray area, and, and it's often worth questioning, you know, in that gray area, it's often not obvious, and we should talk about it and think about it. 